All right, so we've worked with the admin. We have a set of products, but we don't have them displayed anywhere. So if we go on our homepage, uh, we'll see just basic, very basic information still. Um, so now in this one, I'm going to make it so we can actually show our products and we'll show them in what's called a query set. Uh, it's fairly simple and straightforward to do, but we're going to play around with it a little bit so we can see kind of the different things that we want to do. All right, so go ahead and open up Sublime Text and open up your views. And we're going to create a new view and I'm going to call it define all. And it's going to take in a request and it's going to return render request template context just like above. We're going to grab this template variable here and I'll call it products that all. All right, so now we need to set our context and I'm going to call it products. And now I need to set it equal to something. Uh, since our context, we're just going to go simple for now. I'm just going to call it products or product.objects.all. So if you notice here, it's going to the product model and it's getting all of the objects. Basically, it's going to the objects and then it's getting all of them. Um, so we actually have to grab those objects. So we'll do from dot models import product and this is again a relative import to the app itself so if you were in a different app you would do from products.models but since we are within that product app with our view we can do dot models all right so all of this is doing this context right here I can actually let's just take it out of that context and call it and set a variable of products equaling to that and then we'll use our context to be products. All right, so all of this is doing is it's creating a view that's grabbing every single instance of the product model. That's all it's doing. It's literally dot all, so literally all of them. And then our context, we're using a variable context or template variable for products, and that's gonna be set to our view variable products. And then we're gonna use the template of all, which we have not created, so we'll need to do that and then it's gonna render it. So let's save it and we'll actually create a new template inside of products. Save it as all.html. All I did was command S to save quickly. And then we're gonna extend base.html like what we've seen before. And then we'll do block content in block. And now we can use that context of products that we set here, all right? So we could say all products and then use all products, but we're just gonna leave products. So now that we have that, it's gonna return a list of products. So let's actually get it so we can actually see that. And if you remember correctly, when we want to see something as on our page, we need to set up a URL for it specifically. So. We have a view for it, we just don't have a URL for it. So let's open up our urls.py and I'm just gonna copy this one, paste right underneath it, products.views.all and I'll call this all products or simply products like we've been doing so far. So products and then I'm gonna add right in front of this is slash. So uh, this dollar sign, it signifies the end of the string so basically, when it looks for a URL, um, when any part of the Django project looks for a URL, it's going to scan through here. As soon as it finds its URL, it's going to stop. And especially if it has that dollar sign, that means it's going to stop after products. And then that's what the view is going to be for that. All right. So if we refresh in here um, and we go to slash products, we now see this huge list of our products. Perfect. So now we can actually list out all those products. So I'll do for product in products. And I'm gonna put it into a list item. I'll just do product and then product.price. In the list item, in the for loop. And I'll put an unordered list here. All right. So if I come back in here, I refresh, and now it has all these things. So all it did was loop through all the products. So that means it goes through the first one, and then after the first one's done, it goes to the second one. After the second one's done, it goes to the third one. That's what a loop will do. 
So it goes through each one and it gets the the instance of it. So this is the instance and it is the Unicode. So if we change the Unicode in our model, if we change it to like, this is a product and we left it as that and we refresh in here, all it's gonna show is that. So perhaps we don't wanna use the Unicode when it comes to our template. Maybe we wanna just explicitly call title. That way for sure, if we change our Unicode or anything like that, we'll definitely have our title showing up. Well, this is cool. So now we have our products actually showing and they're there and they're working and that's great. Um, but we don't have any pages for the products yet. So we don't have a link to the products yet. And we also um, don't have images for the products either. So there's a few things that I still need to do on this product model. One of them is we need to make a slug and our product title being unique together. We can't have them have a bunch of the same slugs for any given product because that slug is what's gonna make up our URL. So what we're gonna do very soon is actually basically use the slug from any model or any instance of the model and use like, so CFE shirt let's say for instance, that's the slug field for this instance, that's where it's gonna go. And then when we click on that, it'll actually take us to that product itself. So all of these have some title as their, as their slug. So that's a problem. And that's gonna create a lot of issues for us where we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna have to kind of figure that out and see if that um, is even possible to do. And um, then also we want to make sure that we add in some images. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install, uh, I'm going to cancel the server and do pip install south. So if you're working on Django 1.6.5, like you should be, um, south or 1.6 point something, south is going to help us change our databases. Because I said before that if we wanted to change one of these fields or add one or delete one or anything like that, we would have to, um, you can't just do it without ruining the database. So I actually have to use south to actually make changes. Now, if I do Python manage.py sync DB, uh, what I'll see is that it's installed custom SQL. It, it doesn't actually install the model, right? So to check that the model's in there, we go to installed apps and then we can run sync DB and we've got no errors at this point. So what that means is the model itself, this is actually in the database and it's ready to be used. So since we just installed south, we did pip freeze, we pip installed south, we need to add south into our project. We need to add it into our database because south is gonna track changes that we make to our models. So now that we add south, we do python manage.py sync db. And if I scroll up a little bit, it, it creates a table south migration history and that is allowing us to make changes to our models. And if you notice here, synced, everything that's synced are these, uh, not synced, use migrations. We, we need to actually change something to be managed by South, so it's in here, and then South makes the changes for us. So in order to do that, we'll do python manage.py convert to South products. So all I'm doing here is now changing the ability to make changes to our products, right? So like I can now go in here and add something to our models. Uh, so let's actually do that. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna grab this price one and I'm gonna copy that, paste underneath it and I'm gonna get rid of the default and put null equals to true and blank equals to true. And instead of price, I'll call it sale price. So now that we have that, we can actually use slashes there to go to the next line. So it's just a little bit cleaner for us. So now that we have sales price or sale price, um, that we have a price and sale price, we just made a change to the model. So what we can do is python manage.py schema migration products auto. And if you see this, this is good. This is what you should see. If you don't see this, that means that you made some errors with the code, and I'll show you how to do that and, and fix that in just a second. For those of you who see this, we can just now run python manage.py migrate products, hit enter, and let's run the server again. And I'm gonna go into my admin, 
products, click on any product, and now I see that there's this new one called sale price. So this is where I can actually add a sales price to uh, whatever I'm working with, right? So that's kind of good. So if I did, let's say 19.99, saved it, uh, we do see that, hey, that sale, pr sale price is working. All right, so now, well, what if you ran into some errors with your model? Like what if you, for whatever reason, south did not work and you got all these errors and you just don't know what to do? So what I would do is just leave the model as is. I would go in here, I would delete this migrations folder. This is the easiest way to do it, especially when you're in testing, right? So I delete that migrations folder and then I delete the uh, database file so now the migration folder for the app, or any app for that matter, is gone. Um, and so is the history of South, all of the South history. So the entire database is gone now. So all of our products are also gone. So if I did python manage.py sync db, create a new super user, and we're gonna do the same thing that we've done before. Password and everything. And I sync it and what you notice is, hey, it syncs everything. It installed the tables. Now you don't see necessarily all the tables coming through like you did before because we installed south. So it's running this way now. Um, it, or actually it does create the tables up here. So you see the tables all being created here. And then it shows that they are synced after south is installed, um, which is great. So now that we have that, we can definitely run python manage.py convert to south products and now it will definitely match what's in the database so now if we need to make another change to our model you can go in here let's actually delete the sales price or the sale price and run python manage.py schema migration products auto it deleted the field and then we do python manage.py migrate products. And now it's migrated, so the field is now gone. All right, so let's add something back in. I'm gonna add sale price back in and run schema migration again. So now that I made a change, I have to run schema migration, so I hit enter. And now that schema migration goes through, it tells me that, hey, you can run manage.py migrate products, so I do that. And now that change is finished and it's in our database and it's there and it's ready for us to work with. So there's a few other things that we need to mention with using self. Uh, one of them is the null is true and blank is true and also default. So when you add a new field to a model, you gotta definitely have to make sure that um, your model or the field itself is not gonna be blank in the database or it's gonna be allowed to be blank. So if it's gonna be a required field, meaning you want it to be required, then you absolutely have to put a default. If it's not gonna be a required field, then you can do null and blank. Uh, because what it's doing with schema migration is it's gonna to add to all of the current instances this, this new field. So let's see that in action too. Um, so I'm gonna actually go into our, ad, or I'm gonna go into our admin, let's run the server again. And we will also see in our products, I'm gonna to have to log in again, our products now have nothing, but notice that the search is still there, price, all the filters are still there that we made in the admin. So if I add a new product, so product one and sale price 19.99, active, okay, save. All right, so there we go. I have sale price and uh, price, slug, all that stuff, cool. That works, now I'm going to add, let's say for instance, we want to add a um, image field. I'm gonna do image equals models dot, I'm gonna use file field and upload to, and it's gonna go to products slash images. All right, so um, file field. So this is a file uploading field. Uh, we're not actually going to work with it yet. I'm just really showing you what happens when you don't put a default or nor null or blank. Um, we are actually going to end up removing that field and we'll come back to it later. Um, so I'm going to hit control and then I'm going to do python manage.py schema migration products auto. And this is what happens. It says you must specify a default or it says product field does not have a default yet is not null. So that means it's required. So what this is 
this is only saying that you absolutely have to set a default for all the fields that it currently exist. So all the instances that currently are there, it needs to have a default or that field needs to be able to be null, which we did not set. So if I set it to be null here, and then you don't have to set it to be null or blank equals to true. You could just say null equals to true. Now it's actually gonna run. So I'm gonna actually hit, I'm gonna quit now. I'll hit quit now. And now if I run it, it allows me to run it. And then I'll do migrate. All right, cool. So now that actually worked. And if I run the server again and refresh in here, go into products, I see that I can actually upload a file field. Um, which is great. So that's actually kind of what we wanted to see. Uh, but I don't want us to get ahead of ourselves with the file field and image field because we haven't done a few settings. So I'm actually going to delete this. Uh, that point adding it was merely to show you what would happen if you added it without the null or blank or default. So now I migrate it and there we go. Got rid of it. Now it's gone. And we do a refresh, it's no longer in there and, and we don't have any issues with the database or anything like that at this point. All right, so that's query sets, the initial part of query sets, and then also using self. Uh, it's, I know it's two kind of different topics, but they're useful when it comes to actually working with our products. We will actually need to use south quite a bit. So that's why we introduced it just now. All right, so we'll see you in the next one.